Transit Riders Council. We have an awful lot to talk about today. So, first things first, can we get an approval of the agenda? Thank you. Um, minutes. Any changes, additions, deletions, or can we make get a motion to approve the minutes as read? As read or as submitted? Submitted. There we go. He read them. All right. Let me go into the chair's report. Um, I'm very, very excited to say, needless to, needless to say, that uh, the MTA board approved the Atlantic Ticket Field Study, which is the pilot of Freedom Ticket, which we've been fighting and talking about for, for over two and a half years. Uh, some of the details still need to be worked out, but 11 years after we coined the term Freedom Ticket, and almost four years after perseverance by our council, our proposal is happening around June 6th, I believe, will be the kickoff. Um, I, I, need to uh, I would yes. like to make a presentation to Bradley. To Bradley? Yes, second the motion. <laughs> I have a second Okay. It's, it's not necessary, Chris, but... Uh, it's it's necessary. Yay! Yay. 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 Thanks to Carol. It doesn't say. Freedom ticket. Oh, up top. Oh. It does? I don't see any words, but okay. It does. Atlantic ticket. Atlantic. Oh, that's why it's Atlantic ticket. Jesus, is it hard to read? I don't know what language that's in, but. Eminem's first. That's wonderful. Thanks for doing that, Carol. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. And Bradley is the most, of course, chair of the World Council. I'll put it over So, just so you know, there are. Chocolate chips underneath. Wow. <laughs> Carol's a great um, I want to thank Bradley for his tireless work on this project, for all his analysis, for all his uh, his smarts. Yes, I, got him I, could have done, I could have done it without all the people in this room. And all of those who have advocated for this and spread the word about its advantages. And Trudy Mason and Chris Reif, who came to testify on behalf of the project at the Finance Committee, meet, committee meeting this and past Monday. Sharon oh, came in support. Sharon support. came. Sharon. I saw Sharon in the room. Sharon was there. Edith was there. Yes, yeah. indeed. And so we, we had a good, a good crowd. While this has been a long process, the pilot program shows that working collaboratively with the MTA can yield results that benefit large numbers of riders. And I really believe this is going to change people's travel habits. Um, when you can save an hour or more of your commute each way, that's a lot of time that's, that's given back to you, and I believe people will be willing to pay a little more for that privilege. Also, because all of the modes, if you buy the weekly, all of the modes are paid for, commuter train, bus, subway, there's a good chance that if you were a driver, you might, you might opt for trying this out. Stuart. Very quick question. How will you be able to buy a ticket? All the all the t machines will have the, this uh, Atlantic ticket available, and what it will do will it'll call it that. It'll be yes, Atlantic a, ticket, okay. and it, one side will be a Long Island Railroad ticket with the with the weekly dates of of that you purchased. Right. The other side will be a Metro card with with a regular stripe. I think we want to um, find out and make sure that it's a single. It's the first screen that pops up that it doesn't require going to next or something, so it's showcased. Well, uh, let's, let's be clear. I'm talking about the Long Island Railroad machines. You're talking right. about the MBMs in Subway? No, I'm talking no, about no, the, no, the no, ones no. at the Long stations in Rosedale and the Long Island Railroad. Yeah, the right. what? yeah to, that's my question. Yeah, yeah, I don't that's that, you don't want this program to fail. How recognizable, how available? Right. Stuart, yeah. my understanding is that they're going to they're going to give it a lot of, of airplay, um, a lot of promotion. Um, signs will be everywhere. Um, I think um, timetables, it will be notated in timetables. It was originally going to be a six-month test. They, they asked the FTA to give them longer. The FTA requires a renewal every six months, so they got up to a year. So if they wanted to try it in many seasons. So I, obviously it'll be in the summer season, which is sort of light riding to some degree. It'll be in the busy fall season. It'll be in the holiday season, and it will go into the following year. 
And yeah. we uh, people are already that are in those communities are, are are emailing me and with some very good questions like um, you know understanding the first weeks or uh, months you know how is it going to be staffed that first launch day and following up to help people understand so that um, I've asked people that will be using it to to keep the feedback coming to us so we understand suggestions problems all of that so we're, uh, we're working on getting the details and now that it's approved we're planning on we're planning on meeting with the LIR people who will be the people who are selling the tickets and implement it, implementing it on the ground um, so we're going to try to work some of these issues Bill, out is, yeah. is the Long Island portion good for one ride one day no, it's it's just like it's just like if you bought a weekly. If you if you buy, if you assuming you buy the weekly, weekly, assuming you buy, you the can weekly. buy a one way, yeah. you know, which right. is five dollars plus the two seventy five, which would be. Um, but if you buy the weekly, it's sixty. It's sixty dollars. So it's right. unlimited so, right? so, so, yes. Yeah. So it's only twenty. It's only like twenty eight dollars more than, than than a weekly metro. Yeah, and, and the, so, the good thing is, is that some people who were now buying the normal metro card might up their uh, per purchase to include the railroad, right. and plus Bradley analyzed that a lot of trains have 40% or higher availability of seats going to Atlantic Terminal. Let's be clear, this, this pilot serves the following stations, Rosedale, Laurelton, Locust Manor, St. Albans, Queens Village, Hollis, Jamaica, East New York, Nostrand Avenue, and Atlantic Terminal. Mm -hmm. But can you buy the ticket at any? Any of them? They all they all have they all have metric power or ticket vending machines. Right. So any of them. And we're. Well, you're asking about other stations other than those, or mm -hmm. just those? That we don't know. We don't know if you can buy if you can buy a ticket, say at you know, you know. That's what we want to meet with Long Island, Island, Island to get the, the real Island details. Park, yes, we, we, we want to do that. My my understanding that is that you would only be able to buy the tickets at those stations. Yeah, we are not reading in the staff summary. Right, mm -hmm. we and believe so. so. And no, that's for sure, Bradley. Otherwise, somebody from Valley Stream yeah. or right. Bellrose, which are in Nassau County, which could buy that and then cross the line. And, yeah, and yeah. Stuart, we're going to be trying to we're going to monitor the entire rollout and redesign parts of the website to get feedback from customers so we can be monitoring every step of the way and make sure that it, um, it gets rolled out. Assuming that this is still ongoing by April 2019, this is yet another way to cross Brooklyn with the L-Line shut down um, mm -hmm. uh, and, and have some connections. Did anybody mention that? I, ha I did. Yeah, yes, you did. I was there last day. Mm -hmm. I always mention that. Uh, question about the freedom ticket also, I um, mean Atlantic ticket, I'm still going to get to Atlantic ticket fields though. Mm -hmm. Whatever, uh, you said it. Rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? Yeah, sure. <laughs> no, the question is, is for half fare, what's they're going to be, um, because you know, the half fare I'm assuming, like every other railroad ticket that's issued, there will be half fare for, yeah. so that means for another, those that qualify for half fare. Yeah, so, but that's another so thing that, that it hasn't right. been obviously stated, so I think that those are all part of the details we want to well and just because somebody brought it up um, not all of the stations in this field study are accessible correct um, obviously Atlantic Terminal is Jamaica is when Nostrand's renovation is complete it Jill. will be and Rosedale is but I think that may be it mm -hmm. And, and the other thing is some of the stations have ticket windows and thinking, oh, will they be offering extended hours at all of those ticket windows, anything like that, to help if there are long lines or anything in buying the tickets? Or well, I can just tell you that other constituents are already actively hoping that this goes well and it will roll out in their area. Two MTA board members um, uh, from the Bronx uh, mentioned they would like to, to see this happen in the Bronx. So. Um, you know, it's on its way. Let's let's put it that way. Let's hope for a good a good test. Okay, moving on. Um, I am sure you have already been. If you haven't, you've been living in a cave. Heard about the release of the New York City Transit Corporate Plan by Andy Byford. The plan is entitled. Do we have copies for it? We don't have copies for everybody. Okay. It's on it's on the web. I do have a couple of extra copies. Yeah. Somebody wants a yeah, Chris wants, wants a yeah, yeah, copy. Mine, so. yeah. The plan is entitled Fast Forward and it certainly calls for speeding up the process of addressing long standing issues in the transit system. It builds on the subway action plan and the bus plan which have been released within this past year. 
President Byford presented his plan at yesterday's MTA board meeting, and again this morning at NYU Law School, where several of our staff members attended. I will speak more about the content of the plan during my board report. Bill and Carol met with Sarah Meyer, New York City Transit Senior Vice President and Chief Customer Officer, about the issues riders have with using uh, New York State's 511 phone response system to get information from New York City Transit or resolve issues that involve the MTA or New York City Transit. We are familiar with the trials of callers who have spent, in some cases, hours traveling in circles through menus on the 511 system. That is not good. Uh, the PCAC office is accessible through the MTA branch of the system and is one of the few choices that routes callers directly to an actual human being on the other end of the line. Our staff attempts to direct callers to the right menu choice, even putting callers on hold and navigating the menu for them to reach their desired destination. This is really arcane, that, it sh that this should not be so obvious. While there are sometimes other... While there are sometimes other ways, such as the MTA's complex and confusing website, to get needed information or to contact individuals and offices that can provide help, many of the callers we speak with are not technologically savvy or able to deal effectively with large organizations. It's important that these persons have a path into the MTA and New York City Transit, and we're pleased that Ms. Meyer took the time to understand the issues with 511 and add them to her already very long list of communication problems that New York City Transit must resolve. And uh, she's really terrific. Uh, if you met her, you'll, you'll know that in a minute. Uh, Bill testified at the Staten Island Express bus redesign project public hearing this past Monday. He noted the advantages of streamlining bus routes by reducing the number of stops of course, that really depends who stops being eliminated, whether you're in favor of that. <laughs> and creating more direct routes between Staten Island and Manhattan. And the new Staten Island Express bus routing, or, yeah, routing is the right word, does not have buses come into Lower Manhattan, <coughs> go through Ma Lower Manhattan into Midtown, and terminate there. If your bus is destined to one of those places, it goes through the appropriate tunnel. You, it isn't bogged down with Manhattan's uh, Congestion, so that that is a major improvement. Is that an effect? Um, no, it's it's it'll, be all, it'll be August, it's assuming. Fall, the, it's, yeah. it's, well, it'll be August, late August, I guess, assuming the board passes it next week, next month. <coughs> yeah, Monday's hearing was the culmination of an extensive process of consultation, communication and hearing and responding to public input that led to the plan that New York City Transit had. Just because um, the next um, express bus redesign is the promise. Yeah. At the no, not just express buses. Well, well, it's every, oh, all, the whole, I think they're doing all of them. Yeah. They're, all the doing they're looking the whole, at all the routes. It's all part of the bus plan. Okay. Yes. After and the Staten Island, the, the next, I thought that the might be good for the group to know. Um, it's clear not all riders will be completely happy with the changes that will be made, but it's equally clear the problems of slow, costly, and unreliable express bus service cannot be addressed without the toolkit that the redesign team is, is employing. And ex remember, express buses are the most expensive thing the MTA runs. We were joined by several of the transit advocates, but we had the distinction of having a Staten Islander pre present our testimony. And that was you. That was me. They did not say, you don't live here, you don't live here. <laughs> Maybe in a few months they can say that. They can say that, yeah, they can say that in about six months. Yeah. As, as, uh, as New York City Transit has previously discussed, and has been well presented in the news, additional A, D, E, and F trains will be added to the schedule, or schedule, Sandy Byford might say, during the hours immediately preceding or following morning and evening peaks. These changes will take place in November of this year. In addition, more weekend bus service will be provided in Queens, and these changes will take effect in July. Members have been provided information on these service additions in your packets today. The work on the Myrtle Viaduct on the M-Line was completed on time, on budget, and regular service on the M-Line was restored at the end of last month. You may recall that the Transit Riders Council toured these facilities during its field trip two summers ago, and we saw the decrepit condition of the Myrtle Viaduct, that's for sure. Um, while the elevated structures between Metropolitan Avenue and Myrtle Avenue stations were safe for the current level of traffic, they were deteriorated and could not successfully meet the increased demands for service, which is obviously critical as these are part of the plans during the L-Train shutdown to run additional M service. 
Um, I should also say that, and hopefully this is the first of a, of a lot of places this is going to happen, they put special track dampers on this elevated line, which will actually make the trains much quieter for those that border the, the, uh, the elevated structure. And, you know, if it's successful here, I don't know why this couldn't be done everywhere, this elevated structure, which is virtually all the boroughs. Um, speaking of the L train shutdown, the City Department of Transportation convened two additional town hall meetings on plans for the L train shutdown earlier this month. One was held in Manhattan, and obviously the other was in Brooklyn. There is still controversy over the adequacy and acceptability of the shutdown plans as they have been presented, and we can expect additional opportunities for public discussion throughout the remainder of this year. And as I'm sure most of you are aware, uh, members of a couple of organizations in the village have uh, filed a lawsuit. Uh, I asked the uh, general counsel when this might be heard. He, he said it can be delayed and delayed and actually might not even be heard until 2019. In fact, it's even possible that it doesn't get heard prior to the shutdown in April of 2019, which would be bizarre, but I guess is possible. Um, the, the groups are protesting the, uh, the use of 14th Street, the two-way bike lane on 13th Street, uh, the fact that the 14th Street treatment is just rush hours and not all day. I mean, there's just a host of issues that villagers are not very happy about, and they filed a lawsuit. So we'll see where that goes. Please mark your calendars for our June 7th PCAC meeting, where our special guest will be Jano Lieber, MTA's Chief Development Officer. Mr. Lieber previously managed development of World Trade Center assets for the Silverstein properties. He is currently involved in an effort to remake the processes and procedures by which the MTA constructs major projects, the largest, of course, which is east side access for the Long Island Railroad. And Metro North riders obviously have an important stake in this as well because once those slots in Penn Station are freed up and Long Island goes into Grand Central, the New Haven line of Metro North and its four new Bronx stations can then go utilize the Hellgate Bridge and go into Penn Station, thus making a trip from the co-op city area to Midtown at least an hour faster than it currently is, at least, and, uh, and providing service to areas that work previously unserved. And it's sort of interesting, our presentation today is about phase two of Second Avenue because these four new Metro North Bronx stations are approximately where the Second Avenue subway, when it was to have been extended into the Bronx, would have served. You know, Van Nest, um, um, Hunts Point area, um, um, Parkchester, um, Co-op City, all this these were going to go up there. Now it is not clear where after Obviously, phase four brings Second Avenue to Lower Manhattan, but there are a lot of people fighting that after it goes to 125th Street, it should continue to go west and north and serve uh, parts of Harlem and Washington Heights, um, thus really, really serving the borough. Um, we don't know if funding even exists for phase three and four. Uh, we believe funding for phase two will come, and some preliminary engineering and electrical work has been done, but we'll hear more about that. Uh, today, so that's pretty much it for this long report, Bill. No, I didn't have anything. No, I do, um, Andrew. Okay. Uh, one thing, Andrew. Also, uh, I was at the Brooklyn one. Um, I know I heard Edith was at. I know it was at the Manhattan one, but the Brooklyn one was a little more peaceful. What I'm going to say. Peaceful. Yes, peaceful. And Robert, Robert from uh, government can vouch with me because it was better. It was a little more peaceful. No one acted inappropriately. So, so, so thank you. But that's what I'm saying is is. <laughs> The concern that that Brooklyn side has its concern is accessibility issues that still goes on. The concern is it's also <clears throat> where these L1, 2, and 3s are going to stop between parallel with the J, the M, and the Z stops. Um, <clears throat> concern is that the Waynesburg, let's say there's an accident on the Waynesburg Bridge, what is the reroute of that bus? They're concerned of that. And they did say they should add maybe buses to go to a different bridge. The problem is, is, is they're far away, but the options need to be more, more wicked. You know, I'm glad they're doing the buses yeah. on both sides. Mm -hmm. I'm glad they're doing the ferry. L ferry. Yeah. And it'll be an L of a ferry, yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> I know. That's what I was waiting for to say. That. Yeah. <clears throat> but I really, one of the best things MTA does when there's a major shutdown like this or a major project is 
these brochures which say if your destination was here, here is your here is your options. Several new um, transfers are being established. One, at least, of which we know is in the next capital program and will be made permanent. The Livonia Juniors transfer, which is long overdue, but there'll be a you know um, a Broadway on the G to Hugh Street on the J. You know there'll be a. 21st Street on the G to Hunters Point Avenue on the 7. I mean, there's a lot of things that I have a feeling will get people faster than these buses, but we will see. It's good to have everything in preparation. That may be good for customers, but I know Eats will bash on with me, but a lot of them is concerned is accessibility because the L line has, because the problem is, is right now the focus is if a person gets on the L train at Rockaway Parkway, if Merlin Wyckoff Elevator is out, that's it. They're trapped. They have to come back to Rockaway Parkway. Rockaway Parkway is one of the next in a group of stations that is being made accessible. You know, but it is accessible. It has already. It's already. Well, so they gave it. I mean, this. I have a long list of like fourteen stations. The yeah. next, the next round of being made but accessible. But anything just to add, this, this is a serious concern in Brooklyn. Is and Borough President has mentioned this today at the disability meeting that that there is a concern because if Merlin Wyckoff Elevator is out, there is no other way to get to transfer to the M train. Now people have to take additional bus to a location. And they did mention the SBS 82 bus. Not me, but other people. Mm -hmm. And it is a good sign to hear that. And I know the Lions group, who is one of the representatives here today, did mention it at the town at the town hall. And we just need to... I, I am sure that the brochure will give accessible routes. I mean, that's fundamental. So you need it. Edith. I'm sorry. I'm going to tell you, the last set of signs that went up were so terrible. For which project? For the A, the one in the A. They were terrible. They yeah. didn't acknowledge there were any accessible stations that were coming out. Every single transfer I told you was an inaccessible transfer. Mm -hmm. Buses did not take you to an accessible station. But just an arbitrary border. And when you've had these, at least two now, maybe three meetings with Andy Byford about the accessibility, you brought this up, right? I only saw it this weekend. I stood there and read the sign. So it's, and took pictures of them. That's uh, good. Mm -hmm. So we should send those to Sarah. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. And sure. a commitment needs to be brought up because if the L line is going to be shut. But I, I will also say hand. that one of the one of the pieces of, of Andy's uh, corporate plan yesterday was um, service of existing elevators, uh, <coughs> keeping them in working order, um, making sure they are always operating, knowing instantaneously when they go out, and you know, this group service. There's uh, one right now that's not on the list, and it's dead. Say it. You should tell us what it is. It's, um, it's the elevator to go from the A through the concourse, yada yada, to the 4-5. Are oh. you talking about a Fulton Street? Yes. yes. Okay. I mean, it's not on the list. It, I can see it through the door. I'm pushing it. When you, it's when lighting you, up. Okay. And I sat there for five minutes. Each of, each of these has a number, correct? Yes, we've had this before. Edith, each, each elevator has a number. Yes. You didn't get the number, did you? Of course. <laughs> can you give it to Bill? Sure, I'll give it to you. It, that's in the pay, that's in paid area. You're, you're talking about in paid Yeah, I'm in the paid area. Yeah. So it's definitely Same transits. way as you're going to the J, the A, the C, transits. and the Yeah, it's definitely true. Next to the escalator. Yeah, I know where it is. I, I, I've been there mm -hmm. uh, last year. Yeah. Early, early last year, I've been there. Uh, uh, Aaron Gordon, who Aaron writes the Brooklyn Times, writes for the Village Voice and has done some interesting work. He's going line by line on mm -hmm. the impacts of the L shutdown, and I think he's capturing some of the breadth that goes a little beyond the immediate thing and how lines will be impacted also. So um, I think we'll be keeping an eye on that because, again, what, what's happening with the surface transportation um, in some of those areas? What, what's, what's DOT doing or whatever? Yes? Speaking of the L line shutdown, um, I was, I was considering if they're going to put a transfer point between the L to the 3 at um, Livonia Avenue and Junius Street Stations. They're doing a walking transfer during the L shutdown. They're doing a permanent, enclosed, full-time transfer in the next capital program. Okay. 
Yvonne? Yeah, um, you said there were two groups in the village that filed lawsuits? At least two, I think. So. Yeah, who are they? Yeah. Who are they? Um, I've got the, one of them gave me a, a handout at one of the L train hearings. Um, it's, they were represented by Arthur Schwartz. Um, yes. Oh. <laughs> hey, don't pick on Arthur. I just said, oh. That was a no, though. It's an O, an O, not an O. So let's, let's, um, let's talk about... The, the big news from the board is, is Andy's corporate plan. It has several pieces to it. Um, one of them is, is, is attending to all of the existing elevators and, and station assets. He's, he's starting a, a group station manager program where one person will have several people under them. They will be responsible for a group of stations, but the buck stops with the group station manager. And um, he's, he's really on the case about stations, and one of the board members uh, mentioned they were appalled at the condition of stations. So stations are definitely on the list. <coughs> Obviously, the big news is about getting the signal system up and running in less than the 30 years that it would normally take with the current uh, slow method. Um, he holds out a good deal of hope for the ultra-wideband uh, frequency method of signaling. Um, it is under test in a yard now, as well as on the green line on the MBTA in Boston. So it is, it is relatively new technology. If it should be successful, it will speed up immeasurably install, installing new signals. But if it does not, it, we will be going with the CBTC uh, model that is now on the L train and is in Being October, we'll, oh, we'll finally finish on the 7 line and be in operation. <clears throat> this means um, some pain at which, at which President Byford was very clear about um, shutting down some lines or portions of lines nights and weekends. He is very, and, and Chairman Loda very adamant that this will not be full-time shutdowns. This is not the kind of city that can tolerate a full-time shutdown of a line. So that, that was loud and clear. Um, <clears throat> he, he is talking about installing CBTC on main trunk lines, such as the 456 from 138th Street Grand Concourse to the first stop in Brooklyn. Just think about what that oh. means for a minute, shutting down the Lex line. Um, oh. There really, you know, until 96th Street, there really isn't a parallel, and, you know, that's going to be a tough one. Um, but, you know, the A, C, and E, he's talking about um, the 6th Avenue line he's talking about, he's talking about the Queens Boulevard line. Um, these are major, major sections of lines that will require some pain in order to get these things done. Um, he's also talking about the length of the, well, not, not the entire length, but he's talking about the G line from, from Court Square to, uh, what was it, Fort Hamilton Park, right? There. Because the culvert, the culvert CBTC takes over after that, so he's talking about pretty much the entire G line as well. No. And there's no parallel line to that either. There's no parallel line to the A, it's inaccessible. He is talking about making lots more stations accessible. He is undergoing a survey right now of every, well, I would say all 472, but obviously we know that some of them are, so those aren't being surveyed at the moment. But every other station is being surveyed. That's one of the reasons that the, that the chairman was, was not uh, in favor of speaking about a price tag yesterday, because he kept is this, is this really a $37 billion or is this a $22 billion? The, There's too many unknowns. In order to get this plan into operation, we need lots of new cars. We don't know when the R211 fleet is actually arriving. We have to retrofit existing cars, but only as far back as the R68s, because we won't, re we won't spend money on a car older than an R68, because they're going to be done away with, to install them to be CBTC ready. Wait, how old are the r 68 uh, they're from 1988. Yeah, from the 80s for sure. Yeah, yeah. They're 30, 30 years 30, old. 30 years old. And they still have conversational seating, which I like. But I um, <laughs> guess we're not going to see that anymore. <laughs> um, so, so, so he has plans for all of that. Um, he wants to show that things can be done in several different time frames. They're going to guarantee this will be done in 90 days from the day we say we're going to do it. This will be done in 120 days. Then he has the five-year plan and he has the 10-year plan. Now, of course, when the price tag is known, um, then the battle really begins. Um, we all have to do our part, as I'm sure editorial boards, 
Um, someone asked me, is this going to be another battle between the mayor and the governor? And I said, it shouldn't because this is good for everyone. And yesterday, um, one of the board members says, you know, the pri we should not, Ver Veronica said, we should not be amazed by and get sticker shock from what the cost is. And I said, there's a cost of not doing this as well, a big cost. Um, you know, with lost jobs, lost sales, lost taxes, lost everything. Uh, so we really can't fool around with this. It is, it is that important. Um, so Andy is is uh, assembling a whole rollout of these various things and what each one will cost, what can be delivered relatively quickly, what cannot. We also need to find, and, and the, the price, the original price he got from one of our car manufacturers was unacceptable to retrofit um, our cars with CBTC. So obviously, procurement overhaul is one of the major things that the MTA is looking at. Uh, we have the same contractors bidding on everything. I was amazed at yesterday's board meeting, both from Long Island Railroad, Metro North, and Subway, how much, for instance, Judd Lau has, uh, has their hands in the MTA. It's, I mean, they're, they're, they're the ones who are doing the Canarsi tube work as well. <laughs> but they're doing stuff on Long Island and in uh, Metro North and other places in the subway. Uh, Cortland Street, I mean, it's just unbelievable how much they are involved. And we really do need more bidders. We really do. Bill, do you want to you want to add something more about the corporate plan? Yeah, I mean, I, I there's think so much we could go on. Yeah, there, there's just a, there's just an awful lot. It's going to be very, very um, ambitious. It really the corporate plan really is not going to start until uh, in 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 earnest until the until the, the next capital program. Um, there just isn't funding available in, in this one. Although uh, Andy did make very clear that a lot of the initiatives that don't cost money, he's going to have. He's going to be, be putting those in, in into place. The thing, the corp, the restructuring of staff, uh, of staffing, trying to give you know people more authority within their area of area of responsibility, um, trying to work more more closely with with uh, with the empl with employees and with the unions. Um, but it's a, you know it's a big it's a big lift. I mean you the know the employee uh, part is really important. Yeah. He wants to bring he wants to make them equal partners. He says you can't be an ambassador for the system if you're not happy. So he really wants to. Uh, I mean, it's a big lift. It, 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 one of the one of the uh, you know measures of how big a lift it is is after the you know after the uh, event at, at NYU Law School, I went back to the I went back to um, the West Fourth and went to the su su southernmost entrance, and the elevator's broken. So, so you know, he said he was there talking about how, how he's going to improve oh, that's like all of Third Street and Sixth Avenue. Yeah, he was, yeah. He was there, he was there talking. There today. He was there talking about uh, talking about thinking. talking about how how transit needs to do a better job better job with elevators. And you if you if you tried to get if you tried to get uh, to that to that event by accessible by an accessible subway route, you were out of luck. I think one of the things they talked about that was different. Um, about the corporate plan, plan and Andy especially, is the culture change that they're working on achieving and the um, accountability that they're building into it. Uh, he talked more specifically about a, a stations program that would allow for greater account accountability and reorganizing the stations program. Um, and I think that just inside